When you start up your Linux workstation, there are hundreds of messages and lines of information that scroll by. Usually, we don't even see this in our modern Linux distributions because there is a graphical front end that hides a lot of what's happening behind the scenes. But if you turn off that graphical splash screen, you'll be able to see a lot of information go by. Now, fortunately, there is a way you can go back and look through all of the information that was going through during that startup process. It's stored in a buffer. Specifically, it's something called a ring buffer, and it's just for the kernel. I should also note that there is something in computer technology called security rings. It's an architecture that's based on the hardware of your CPU, where kernel is in ring 0 and your user programs are in ring 3. That's not what this is talking about. This is a special kind of buffer that is circular, so that when the buffer fills up, it simply starts overriding the oldest information, just like a circle or a ring might be. So when you hear the kernel ring buffer, what you should really be thinking is the kernel ring buffer. This ring buffer is going to have all of this information inside of it. It's going to be able to tell you exactly what went by on your screen when you started up that Linux workstation. And because it's a ring, it can never fill up all of your hard drive space. You can never run out of room because the size of that ring buffer is something that is hard coded to the kernel itself. That way you can be assured that no matter what flies by during startup, you're always going to have a way to go back and see what was there. To view this wall of text that may have scrolled by during the startup process, once you get logged in, you can use a command called dmessage, D-M-E-S-G. That dmessage command stands for display message or driver message, and it allows you to see everything that's in the kernel ring buffer. On some Linux distributions, this information is also written to a file that you can find in var log dmessage. So you can look in either place in some distributions. In the distribution that I'll use, we'll use the dmessage command to look back through the ring buffer. I have my OpenSUSE distribution here, and I've already configured a startup option that's going to allow me to see the text going by. So let's choose that. And as you can tell, this goes by very quickly. It screams by on the screen. You can't see anything that has gone by. There's no way to go back and read it. There's no way to stop it to see what went by. Everything just flies by at once. So this dmessage command is going to help us quite a bit. And when this starts up, let's log in. Let's start up our desktop as we normally would. And then let's pop open a terminal session and run that dmessage command. From our desktop, let's start up a terminal command. I have mine right here. And let's run that dmesg, dmessage command. And boy, a lot of information went by, pages and pages of text. If we scroll back up a bit, we'll see there's a lot here. So even if you're trying to find something that's in this big list of information, that can be a bit of a challenge. So let's run the same command, but this time let's pipe it over to less. We'll put the pipe less in there, which means now we have a way to move up and down through this list. We can page down. We can go to the top we, with the home key. We can go to the bottom with the end key. That less utility provides us with a lot of flexibility. So let's look at the information that we would see in here, the initialization that occurs. We even have timestamps in here so we can see exactly during the startup process what was the timestamp that occurred when things like the bio BIOS mapping was discovered. If we go further, we can see that the hypervisor was detected because I'm running this in a VMware session. We can scroll down even a little bit further and see other information about the CPU, how memory is being mapped, all of the details about what happened when we started up. Because we're in the less view, we can also search for things. Maybe I'm interested in knowing at what part during the startup process did my Bluetooth information properly load. So I'm going to hit the slash key. And that's the forward slash. That puts me into a search mode. And then I'm just going to type blue. And it's going to take me right to the lines that deal with, for instance, the virtual Bluetooth adapter. There's the Bluetooth core ver version information. There's the Bluetooth information about the driver itself. So I can use that slash command to search through this less and see exactly what was inside of this file. The search functionality also works the other direction. If I use a question mark and I type something in like CPU, it will search backwards and find the first instance of that particular search string. This becomes really helpful when you're troubleshooting. Maybe you're trying to troubleshoot a particular chipset. Maybe you're trying to find out information about your Bluetooth driver when it loads and what driver is loading associated with that. Using these search functions can allow you to find that information very quickly. 
because there's so much information here, you might also want to look at the same information on a machine that's starting up properly. That way you can start to compare the lines of information within this kernel ring buffer to see exactly what the differences might be between those two systems. The kernel ring buffer is not the only place you can go to find information about what happened when your system started up or to find information about startups that may have occurred previously. The kernel ring buffer is only going to tell you about what happened just then on the latest startup. Plus, there are other messages that might occur on your system that you might want to get information about, other things that occur that aren't part of that kernel startup process. There's a logger that is running on your system that is able to log all of this information. And usually, it's logging to multiple files. Files. This logging is the syslog D. On certain distributions, you may see a different name associated with it. My distribution, for instance, has an R syslog D that's running. It may be a syslog ng, but it's all about that syslogging function. And its job is to find all the information going by and to log that information into files. One of the files you may be interested in looking at is in your var log messages file. That particular log file is going to have information that goes beyond just the kernel ring buffer. Application information goes in there. Other details about what's happening on your system is there. There are a bunch of other files in the var log directory that can also give you information about the way certain applications and certain aspects of your system might be running. The var log directory is not something you can access with normal user capabilities. You would want to be a super user, or if you're performing any function of those log files, you want to sudo into that so you'll be able to see what's inside of those files. For instance, if I change my directory to the var log directory, you can see there are a lot of files here, a lot of log files. And as I mentioned, there is one in here called the messages file. And if I try to do a less to messages, you'll see that it says permission is denied. If you're going through and looking at a lot of these logs, it may make more sense to simply go in as a super user. And then you'll be able to go to the log directory and do your view of that information. If I do a less messages now, now I see all of the messages inside of it all the way through, everything that's ever happened. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom with the end key. And you can see there's a lot of messages in here that go beyond just the kernel. There's other information in here coming from other daemons and other applications that might be inside of this. And we can, of course, use the same functions that we have because we're using less to search through here with the slash key or to search backwards with the question mark key. I'm going to use Q to get out of this list so that we could see these other files that are here. We can see there are other things like a firewall log, a mail log, a mail.err, a mail.error log, a mail.info log, a mail.warn file. There's a lot of different log files that are contained within var log. So if you're trying to find information about why a certain application failed, what type of information you can find associated with a particular daemon that might be running, this is the standard place to go to find those log files. In some cases, those log files might even be in a directory underneath the var log. For instance, there is a news directory that contains log files specific to the news function that's running in that particular operating system. But if you look at the var log directory, it won't take you long to find exactly what log files are associated with what features and what functions. And then you'll be able to do the troubleshooting you need to understand exactly what's happened in your system from the moment you started the operating system all the way up to the present time. If you're wondering where the syslog is on your system, we can do a very simple process view. And I'm going to choose AX so I can see more information about the processes themselves and the entire command line that was being used in those. And I'm going to grep just for syslog. I know mine is not called syslog. But if I do that, it will find every instance of where just the word syslog might be used. You can see there is a libsystemd that's doing a syslog bridge. Here's an sbin r syslog d. That's my syslog. That's running in my system. Here's something called Pulse Audio. That's my audio that's being able to send information out the speakers. And it even tells you in the command line that ran that that the log target was just going to syslog. So that information would be put in messages. And there's the grep that I just ran to find the syslog that's running on my distribution. So you should be able to do exactly the same thing with the PSAX and pipe it to grep syslog. And you'll be able to find the syslog that's running on your system. Normally, we never go through these log files. There's so much information there. It's not something we proactively do. But if you are administering a lot of Linux workstations and Linux servers, and you're running into a problem, it's very useful to know exactly where to go to get the information you need to help troubleshoot those issues.